In downward facing dog, do our heels need to be on the floor? If our heels are up and lifted away from the floor, is that wrong or is that bad? So this is a super common question about downward facing dog because for many bodies practicing downward facing dog, for many bodies, it's very challenging, if not impossible, to bring the heels down to the floor. So I would first of all like to emphasize that no, the heels do not need to be on the floor in downward facing dog. It's totally fine. And down dog is still perfect if the heels are up. So it is not the case that heels on the floor is a correct downward dog and that if the heels are up that this is incorrect. Uh, not at all. Uh, your downward facing dog is a perfect downward facing dog, whether the heels are up or down. But I do know that we do sometimes have, just have a goal of getting our heels down in downward facing dog. Maybe we're just interested in finding that sensation of groundedness that can come with the heels descending and how that may affect how we feel overall in the pose. So if that's the case, I have some suggestions in this video that I think can be helpful for moving our body toward that goal of getting the heels down. So first of all, let's just look briefly at like what it means to have the heels down or the heels not down, like what's happening anatomically there. And basically this just comes down to range of motion in our ankles. So in downward facing dog, this is a position of an ankle position called dorsiflexion. And dorsiflexion is this position when the shin angles forward, like relative to the ankle, and the uh, front of the foot and the shin have come closer to one another. So that's dors dorsiflexion is what I just showed in down dog. This is also dorsiflexion. And like the complementary movement to that at the ankle is plantar flexion, pointing the foot. So dorsiflexion is this action, like the shin is angling forward, and that's what's happening in downward facing dog. So it's very common for people to like lack some range of motion in dorsiflexion and to just not be able to move very far into this direction of, of motion. And there can be many different reasons for that. It could be like, uh, le like flexibility in the calves. Like if we're less flexible in the calf muscles, that might hold us back. There could be something structural in the joint. There, there are a lot of things that could be going on, but it just, it does just come down to in downward facing dog. If the heels don't descend, that's uh, dorsiflexion and a lack of range of motion in dorsiflexion. At least a lack of range of motion in the sense that you want your heels to come down and they're not down. So there's a lack just in that sense, in that context is all that I mean. So if we want to try to work toward getting our heels down and down dog, um, I have some suggestions. So here is one of them. This one I really love. I really like how it makes uh, me feel through the calves and the ankles, and it can be great for working to increase some mobility. So here's what it looks like. For this, we actually start in a forward fold in Uttanasana, and you would start in Uttanasana at the back of your mat. So here in this position, I'm in neutral ankles as far as like dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. I'm just in neutral. But if I were to start to walk my hands forward, do you see how now my shin is starting to angle forward relative to the ankle and I'm starting to move into dorsiflexion. I'm moving from neutral forward into dorsiflexion. So what I really like to do with this like down dog, if down dog, heels down and down dog is a goal, is you start in Uttanasana and then you keep the heels down. Don't let them lift, keep them down. And we just walk forward just to the point that we can still keep them down. So if you walk so far forward that they start to pop up, then we went too far. We only go to the point where the heels can stay down. And that might bring you into a shorter downward dog than, than you're used to, and that's totally fine. But that action of committing to the heel staying down as the shin comes forward, and then you come forward and hold in that shape. So what that effectively does is it creates this 
active dorsiflexion because you're it, you're um, keeping the heel down as the shin comes forward. And what's happening is you're actually having to actively dorsiflex. We're using the muscles of the front of the shin, the tibialis anterior is one of them, in order to pull and hold the foot into dorsiflexion as the shin angles forward. So it's like a active dorsiflexion drill, but really in the context of downward facing dog. So it's super relevant for downward facing dog. And you could approach it, you know, in a few ways, like you could start in Uttanasana, you could come forward and again, just to that edge, just to the point where like the heels start to want to lift, but they don't, they don't, you don't let them. The reason you're not letting them is because you're actively pulling the foot into dorsiflexion. And then you can hold that here for a few breaths, holding basically this isometric contraction of the anterior, the shin and the anterior ankle to hold that um, position. So you could do that and hold, or you could go back and forth. Like you could come forward and then you could walk back, bring it back to neutral and then come forward and just treat it for, you know, just like do that a few times in a row. But that is one way that I like working on improving that ankle mobility for downward facing dog. Here's my second suggestion for working toward more ankle mobility for downward facing dog. And this is another position that is super relevant for down dog. It's like in the context of down dog. So for this movement, we would start in our downward dog and then bend our knees quite a bit. Like see how I have my knees just, you know, a few inches above the floor here. Then from here, I'm going to straighten my knees, but there are actually two different ways we could think about straightening our knees. One way would be to push the knees straight back to straighten the knees. That's like one way to straighten the knees. And then the other is to think of in order to straighten the knee, think of lifting your thigh bone straight up and descending your shin bone straight down. So that is a little more like up and down of a direction in order to straighten the knee. So to go back to that first example, we could straighten the knee by pushing the knees straight back, which is a little more of a horizontal movement. But we could also think of straightening the knee by pulling the thigh bone up and descending the shin bone down. And that's going to be a little more up arrow, down arrow, a little more of a vertical movement. And uh, obviously in both examples, we are straightening the knee, but it's more about how we're getting there and what our intention is behind that and what sort of muscular engagement that, that like lights up. So it's that second example that I like for this downward facing dog movement, which is the thigh bones lifting up and the shin bones lengthening down because that really lights up some co-contraction of the muscles really all the way around both the knee and the ankle joint. And that can be a really great way to actively work on improving dorsiflexion. So we start here with the knees bent and then I think thigh bones up, shin bones down. And I do that uh, as I move my heels toward the floor. So they may not get all the way to the floor, but we're just moving in that direction. And by thinking of lifting up and reaching down, that's going to light up and co-contract muscles all the way around, really the ankles and the knees. And that's gonna be a really great way. So we could do that repeatedly, just like multiple times in a row, bend the knees and then straighten with that emphasis on up, down. And that's a really nice way to feel for a really great active calf stretch and to target improving dorsiflexion mobility. Now here's my second to last suggestion for moving toward heels down in down dog. And this suggestion involves taking a yoga blanket. Uh, you could do a rolled up blanket. I have mine folded here, or you could do a rolled up towel, place it at the back edge of your mat and then when, and then we set up for downward facing dog with our heels like right above the blanket, then we can push our heels down into the blanket into downward facing dog. So we think of pushing down. And this is a really great way when we push the heels down, once again, that's gonna actively light up some engagement through the anterior ankle and shin. So it'll be a little active. But it also is just a nice way to feel 
the grounded sensation that sometimes we're after when we have a goal of like getting the heels down and down dog, if we can't actually get them to the floor yet, if we use an elevated surface like a blanket, we could find a very similar sensation of the heels grounding down. And that can help us just find that experience that we may be looking for. So this is a good way just to kind of change our experience and what we feel in the shape. And it's moving us a little closer to heels ultimately on the ground. But then we can also use this object, this like felt object to push the heels down into, and that can light up a little more active mobilizing in that position of dorsiflexion. My first three suggestions for working toward heels down and down dog all involved using the down dog position. So I really like them because they're all really relevant for that yoga pose of interest. But this is a fourth suggestion that I have that takes us out of the down dog shape, but it really directly looks to mobilize the ankle in ex basically exactly the position that we need for downward facing dog. So this is a ankle mobilization here. So you, we come to stand at a wall, place our hands on the wall, and then we're just gonna come into like a, a stride or a lunge, or basically this looks a lot like warrior one in the lower body. So we step one foot back, and I will be stretching, I'll be mobilizing the ankle of my back leg. And then this front knee can bend. And this is like, you know, this is warrior one is like this. So this is similar to warrior one. However, we probably know that in warrior one, we often kind of angle this back foot a bit. But in this, in this stretch that I'm suggesting here, we would not angle the foot, but instead the foot would point straight forward and we would be reaching the shin straight forward over the foot because that is hitting dorsiflexion right on. And that's a really good way to effectively mobilize into dorsiflexion. So it's basically this, it's like a standing lunge stretch. The back heel stays down and we keep this knee straight because in down dog, the knee is straight. And when the knee is straight, we will target the gastrocnemius, which is our more superficial calf muscle. And that one becomes really relevant in down dog because it's a straight knee dorsiflexion pose. So we can simply hold here, and this can just be a great position to hold, you know, maybe 30 seconds or so. And we do that like repeatedly. This is an excellent way to mobilize the ankle. And here I could switch sides. I could step forward and then I step back. I descend the heel to the floor as I lunge forward. And again, you might look back there and just make sure that the foot angle straight forward. This is not, like I said, warrior one, where we kind of cock the ankle to the side, but instead it goes straight back and down. The heel is on the floor and we just lunge forward into a great stretch. So hopefully your movement I can see that this type of lunge stretch puts the ankle, so straight leg, straight knee, and dorsiflexion, it's basically the same lower body wise as down dog. Oh, I forgot I still had the blanket here, but down dog. So again, straight knee, ankle dorsiflexion. So that's why it's really relevant stretch for downward facing dog. So that concludes my suggestions for working toward getting your heels down in downward facing dog, if that is a goal for you. And if you appreciated this content, subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on all the tips that I share.